Welcome back to DXB today, where we are delving into the world of teamwork. It has evolved, as with many things uh, in life. Uh, and somebody who knows that more than anyone is, of course, Neha Gaga, who is the managing director of Rush Away. Joining us now live on the sofa. Great to see you, Neha. Thanks for joining us. Same here. Thank you. So let's do the uh, let's do the elevator pitch first and foremost. Rush Away. <laughs> what is it? Go. Well, Rush Away, we started in 2015, not as a team building company, as an urban adventure race company. Uh, the idea was to get participants to discover the great experiences in Dubai, but in a gamified format. Mm. Um, it was just a concept for our friends, not really a business at that time. But then after that, um, I, I went for this backpacking trip for four and a half months. And I soon realized the what great experience, the role they play in human relationships. So when I got back from there, we had a lot of people asking, when is the next rush away? And that's when I'm like, Let, let's create something out of it. Uh, and uh, yeah, we started creating these rush away adventure races, mm. uh, which soon we got some great collaborations. We created that into uh, something Mercedes Benz Challenge. They became really popular, didn't they? When it was, yeah. Both individual and the corporate world. As that's well. right, that's yeah. right. Then, um, uh, then we went into corporate challenges. And soon, very organically, uh, you know, corporate started asking us, could you do something for our companies in a private way? Because they realized that great experiences or gamified experiences could, could really get a team together and uh, yeah, make them realize what an effective team is. You work on your strengths and you don't know what's coming, uh, you know, in front of you, but that's fine as long as you're working well as a team and just getting through it. Mm. So yeah. Neha and Alicia, because uh, I want to know more about the psychology of these type of team building activities. Mm. So I know I was with a company that sent us to play paintball as a team building activity. But as part of that, mm. you take the team and you make two teams that <laughs> shoot paintballs at each other. What do you think of the psychology of that? Do you think that makes sense or is it better to have the whole team as one unit? Um, I think, well, they're different formats. As long as, um, an objective is set at the start, whether you're working with you know, team A or the other side or you're all working together. I think what's important is setting a clear objective. We are a team and we need to get there and let's work on our strengths, let's do whatever it takes, let's communicate, let's collaborate. But as long as we beat the other team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just make it everyone against you know, HR. <laughs> yeah. I, I think whenever there's competition involved, somehow uh, we all come alive. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to win this and, and, and yeah, I, I think there needs to be a bit of competition to, to make something exciting. I agree 100%. I don't, every team building thing I've ever been a part of, something happens. The mm -hmm. quiet person now becomes trained in military style <laughs> guns and then also the same person from quiet that's from hr that only eats the one thing that you never know what it is <laughs> turns out to be super talkative outside the <laughs> office and it's a way for everybody to kind of find the whole person not just but the work person you, you hit on something that it's outside the office is that key yes i think that it is um that's like in the same place you are every day, you can't expect new things to happen sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And when you take everybody out of, outside the office, it allows just a little bit, like my shirt will change. So right. if we have a meeting outside and we're not going to the office, I may wear something completely different than what I would in the office. So it just a little bit, depending on the person, there's always somebody that shows up in a sweatsuit. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> okay. But it's it's it just takes a little bit less people let their hair down a little bit and so now people are more open to it. Yeah. Sometimes when it's at work it feels like a meeting that you're required to yeah. be at because it was already put placed in your calendar. Which is exactly yeah. why Neha like Rush Away is incredible for that. Everyone's outside and out in the open and getting involved. G can you give me an example of some of the activities that you run as part of your Rush Away tra challenges? Right, so over the years we have evolved to, I mean, to, to also be relevant, right? Because exactly like you said, it started off with Build a Bridge many, many years ago. Yeah, yeah. But, but you need to keep evolving. Uh, like for example, COVID played such a big role in us uh, going online and creating some really effective, engaging online team building activities. Mm. So, so that happened at that time. Now when things got back, uh, technology got involved. So what can we do with VR? What can we do with some other interesting aspects? Mm. Um, and yeah, we have escape rooms also, but can we bring that to a town hall, an escape game, you know, into a boring, let's say, 
long or a very long two-day meeting? Can we do something, just one hour to, you know, get everyone engaged? Yes, of course, we do the outdoor activities, which are most popular, but the same things can also bring, uh, come back to an office. Yeah. Yeah, we, we can do it indoors. No, it yeah. makes sense. Neha, thank you so much for coming to DXB today. Can you handle 14 presenters at once <laughs> with Rush Away? <laughs> Not a problem at all. Oh, that's a challenge in <laughs> thank itself. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank now you. we move on to today's Spotlight, and it's on the world's first B2B platform for industrial asset exchange. An innovative enterprise and winner at the London Business School, MENA startup competition that Dua covered this past week. This is Surplus. Hi, my name is Rana Haji Rasuli. I'm the founder of The Surplus, a climate tech B2B platform that enables a sustainability exchange profitably. We're trying to solve some of the most pressing climate related issues pertaining to waste and underused resources. And we're trying to solve that through the most innate human component, sharing. So many companies think that sustainability or climate action needs to be very expensive. It takes a really long time to recoup your investment or it takes an enormous amount of resources. We want to show them that it's not true and everybody can participate in action. So our hands for growth are to partner with governments and city councils, both within and outside the UAE, because they operate most of the major industrial parks and of course, large players and corporations because they have a very large supplier network that is very emission intensive. What we're hoping to show is that young female entrepreneurs in the Middle East, especially in Dubai, have the climate tech solutions that we really need to combat the most difficult problems of our time. Dubai is a perfect location because it serves as number one as a perfect hub for entrepreneurial ecosystem. We know that innovation is skyrocketing in this city and we have access to the most key markets, making it a perfect place for clustering opportunities for industrial areas for us because they're very close in proximity, offering perfect opportunities for sharing and circular economy. I would be at home with my dogs, reading my book and not going outside for a little while as an introvert. The surplus are actually doing really big things. I have a lot of time for them. Right, time for the roundup. Thomas Urquhart, what's going on? So here's a story that we've happened upon. It sort of goes into the evolution of team building okay. at the moment. Uh, companies now turning to virtual reality, uh, VR technology, if you like, to provide immersive and engaging experiences for their employees. So that goes back to my argument that, t the, that VR, or rather tech, is now enabling us to go do team building exercises, but also enhance our meetings with team building tools without even going out the front door, which I don't fully agree with. Okay, so I, again, have a bit of insight into this, having worked for team building companies oh, yeah. before that use tech and VR. Now, the interesting part about it is, so for example, they do an escape room online. The tech and the AI and the computer side of things actually give more accurate feedback because they're not worried about offending people. Mm. And so instead of me sort of trying to give fat you, Faris, saying, oh, perhaps you need to be a bit more this or a bit Why more Why would that, you say something like that? I'm just saying, no. So it's actually really interesting that from a tech side of things, it gives more direct feedback. What do you think about that, Alicia? I do. I do think that tech is going to give you the accurate feedback. It's... My fear with that is the Terminator, just as a whole. <laughs> as, Robots as are gonna life. take over the world. That's one. Sure. But for, for the sense of team building, it uh, I'm interested to see, does it take, take the humanity out of it? Does it take the personal connection out of it? Because as much as you can still have analytics, and that's what AI is delivering so much fast, 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 accurate information, but it still is unable to do a lot of the things and connect the way that certain people want to connect. And I think that's a good catalyst or at least a vehicle for creating team building. But at the same time, it still has to be you like me, I like, well, we, have, we still have to connect in some way, shape or form. And that, until the Terminator <laughs> happens, <laughs> Well, it still has to happen. The thing right. is, Alicia, I mean, I agree, it's better to do things face-to-face. -face. That's the, how the real team building happens. Yeah. But, as we know, companies are global. 
teams are remote, people 100%. aren't always in the same place. My two brothers, I mean, I live here in Dubai, one of my brothers lives in Jordan, the other brother lives in the United Kingdom. So every Monday, we get together, and it's not VR, but we play a video game where we can hear each other, yeah. and we're doing a shared activity. So that's how I feel close to my brothers. So I think when it comes to like remote being different countries, it does really help with that. Agreed. Agreed 100%. So I play back home with my parents, my mom, my, my dad, my brother, my sisters, my friends. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But right. if I could, if I could fly back home, that, those are, that, that's cool and that's great and that's family and that's fun etc. We're talking about work here. We're talking about, <laughs> but this is this is VAR being used in a work environment. My point being, going back to your original point, mm -hmm. if you're going to do that in the conference room at work, you've suddenly got your, your, your back up to there. a certain degree. Mm -hmm. You know, you mm -hmm. haven't you haven't been able to re re relax at all. So how on earth are you going to find out anything about anybody? The beauty of team building is taking people out and then seeing the other side to them. Surely, yes. take them into the car park, whack VR on there, and that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but when you put the VR on in the office, you are being taken to the planet of Zion or to a jungle somewhere, so you can do different things. You just need to have some imagination, Tom. The, uh, I, 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 I obviously have no imagination. <laughs> Tom, you know what I think we need? Team building. Team building. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a short break. After that break, we talk to some actual cosmic centaurs. Are you intrigued? I certainly am at the moment. I'll stay right here.